This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. Get 15% off camera batteries with promo code INSTANT. Welcome to In an Instant, my name is Ben, and today, Shrek lovers can finally unite as Polaroid releases their newest and most experimental film, Duochrome Green. Polaroid is selling this film at a reduced price as experimental because it is one of their most challenging films to use. And in this episode, I will walk you through my experience with shooting it and the tips and tricks I learned along the way to get the best results. Let's do it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Alrighty, let's get into it. So Polaroid has just released Duochrome Green, and this comes on the heels of two other Duochromes they've released in recent years, Blue and Yellow. These films are awesome. Uh, they're a take on the black and white emulsion with a different color layer to give you awesome effects. However, unlike those films, Duochrome Green is a lot less stable. Polaroid says that they've mixed the dyes of blue and yellow to create this green color, and that paste just doesn't function as well or as predictably as the other Duochrome. So there's a lot of little things to look out for when you're shooting this, and I hope that this video can help you out a little bit because I certainly could have used these tips before going into this. <laughs> So I decided when I was gonna shoot this test batch of Duo Green that I was gonna use the Mamiya RB67. So this obviously is not a Polaroid camera, but uh, you can get 3D printed uh, modded Polaroid backs that shoot 600 film on it. The reason that I wanted to shoot it this way is because I wanted to be able to specifically meter for my results. Knowing that this film was not gonna give me predictable results, I wanted to be able to exactly dial in exposures, test what works, test what doesn't. And I think that experimentation process really helped me understand how this film works and this stuff that I've learned can apply to using the Polaroid Now Plus, the Polaroid Now, the SX-70, whatever you use to shoot with, all of these principles and things that I picked up still apply. And another thing I kind of like uh, shooting with the RB is that it does produce this vignette sort of lack of coverage on the sides of shots, but when you're shooting with black frame film, it sort of blends into it. So I obviously just like the results I get out of the RB anyway, and it was really fun to try to use this film in it. So I eagerly loaded my first pack, really not knowing what to expect. And I went out with Lauren and I was like, all right, we just gotta fire off. We gotta get this first shot off. And we did, and it came out completely white. Um, I did not know the cause of this. I wondered if maybe it was a loading problem, maybe there was a leak in the back or something. Uh, then I took the second shot and it was great. I really love this shot. I think it's really cool. I think the balance of exposure is perfect. I mean, for the challenge of shooting indoors. And uh, that, I didn't really understand why the first shot came out white, and, and now I do. So one of the principles that we're gonna be talking about in this episode is dynamic range. So dynamic range describes the latitude a film has in how much it can capture highlights and shadows and what is the range that it's able to capture of light. And Duochrome Green in particular has less dynamic range than other Polaroid films I've used. That means in this case that it really can't capture highlights very well. Um, I was trying to figure out exactly how much it can capture. I was finding a lot of my images Images were coming out with white skies, even if a subject seemed properly exposed, but it was up in the sky and I was shooting up at it, it was just coming out white, which was really frustrating, but it's because I just didn't really understand that the dynamic range of this film doesn't appear capable at shooting at exposures that bright. And maybe results may vary, People may have different experiences from pack to pack. That's my experience having gone through four packs is that certain level of highlights, the film just can't capture it. So I'm gonna get into this on a little bit of a granular basis, but then I'm gonna give a more overall basic explanation of what I'm about to say. So I metered the same scene at 640, which is the ISO speed of the film that you're recommended to shoot with. Then I shot the same scene at 1600 and then 3200. So I was underexposing those shots to try to capture the sky. I realized that I can't do that. It just doesn't work. So I decided to go to a more shadowy area and really figure out like what is the zone we should be looking for for shooting this duo green. And the way I dialed this in was with exposure value. So exposure value is not used very commonly anymore, but it is essentially the combination of the f-stop and the shutter speed. It's called EV values. They were 
very common in older cameras. Nowadays, people don't really meter that way as much, but it, it gave me a good idea of sort of what to look out for. So I went under a bunch of massive solar panels and I said, okay, there's a, a little bit of a gradation here in, in the light. Let me see what the exposure values are of this scene. The roof was at about a 10, the car at 12, everything in the distance was around 13 and the sky was 18. And in this first shot, which I shot at 640, I shot at box speed, I was just doing what it says on the box, it was overexposed. That told me that the exposure value of 14 was probably the high point of this film. So I decided to underexpose it and I got a good result. So you can actually get exposure value apps for the phone. There's like a million, I'll put one in the link in the description. That'll help you give you like a rough estimate of what your scene really looks like in camera. I would describe this film as oops all midtones. <laughs> that is really, I think, how you should think of using this film. I wouldn't really shoot it in direct sunlight. I would look for midtones, look for shadowy areas. Um, in thinking about this film that way, I ended up using it at night a few times. I tried to do star trails with it, but the moon started rising and it kind of ruined the shot, but you can see where my mind was at with this. Uh, I shot some lighthouses at night. I had a lot of fun once I kind of figured out what this film was capable of and the look that it could give uh, in shooting those kinds of subjects in dimmer light. And if you have an SX70 or you shoot with the Now Plus or the Now, you can use exposure compensation to underexpose your scenes uh, so that you get the best exposure if it is a little bright out and you're not really quite certain. I think underexposing is definitely the direction you wanna go in generally. However, it is a very high contrast film, so you may find that your shadows get crushed a lot, but I do think that looks better than having like a completely white out overexposed image. Another thing that Polaroid says to look out for with this film due to the instability of the chemistry is a splotchiness that you occasionally see. Uh, that seems to creep up randomly. Uh, I did actually see it quite a bit in duochrome blue. Uh, it creeps up a little bit more in green, but it honestly wasn't that bad. You can see what we're talking about here. Uh, they say that this is a result of mixing the blue and yellow paste. I think that it probably is the fault of the blue paste because I saw this on duochrome blue so much but who the heck knows? It's something to look out for. Polaroid is aware of the issues with this film and so that's why they are selling it for a reduced price and they want you to experiment with it. And I think if you look at this as a film stock that's for experimentation, it can be really fun to mess with. When I first set out to shoot this film, I think my mind was naturally going toward shooting nature and uh, really capturing some trees and the stuff that you naturally associate with the color green, just thematically, I thought it was interesting. But once I started having these exposure issues, I definitely adjusted my plans a little bit. I started shooting more lighthouses because they're kind of fun to shoot in lower light. I also gravitated toward the oddity of green as something we associate with like aliens because the, the shots were coming out very alien looking. Back to the Shrek reference, I mean, it obviously makes people's skin look green, but uh, when you get a green sky, it just, I don't know, something about my mind goes to like UFOs, alien abductions. So I sought out to capture a couple things that were referential to that. And I think going forward, that might be the sort of way I go about using duochrome green and doing a little bit more of concept shooting with it because it is an awesome and weird color and you're not gonna get this look with any other film. That's really the appeal of this stuff. And uh, so I had a great time with it once I figured that out. If you have any questions, I am here in the comments to answer them. This may be one of the most confusing films to shoot with, uh, definitely the most challenging, like I said. So I am here for you. My heart goes out to you if you have a couple duds. It's normal, it's gonna happen. Uh, but again, once you dial it in, it's actually chef's French kiss. All right, thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and make like Shrek and go ogre to that subscribe button. Nah, stay tuned for more. <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay tuned for more reviews, guides, tips, and all things instant. Bye.